Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. If you don't know me, I'm Mark, a diabetes specialist dietitian and author of diabetesdietguide.com. Today we're continuing with our medication series and today we are looking at sulfonylureas. Like all the videos in our medication series, this is not advice about whether or not you should be taking these medications. It's purely to show you how they work so you have a better understanding about how these are helping treat your diabetes. What are sulfonylureas? Let's start with what sulfonylureas are. So they're a medication class used in type 2 diabetes primarily, although you might see them used elsewhere, for example, with steroid-induced diabetes. They're one of the older medication classes, actually, and they've been around a long time, so we have a lot of experience in using them, particularly in type 2 diabetes. The way they work is by stimulating the pancreas to produce more insulin. So in practice, we say that they give the pancreas a little kick and it splurts out a bit more insulin to help cover food and episodes of hyperglycemia. It's for this reason that they're generally taken with food, usually breakfast and your evening meal, to help prevent the glucose rise caused by carbohydrates in your diet. If you took these without eating, then the risk is that you may have a low blood glucose level. There are lots of different types and brands, but the most common are known as gilbenclamide, glimepiride, glipizide, glitlizide, and tolbutamide. Some examples of these medications, like tolbutamide, are first-generation sulfonylureas. So if you're still taking these medications, they're not widely used anymore, and therefore it might be worth checking in with your medical team to see if they can update you to a second-generation option. The dose will depend on the type of medication that you're taking, so there can be a wide range between how many tablets you may take with each meal. Benefits of sulfonylureas. One of the key benefits to taking sulfonylureas is that they're quite effective at lowering blood glucose levels. We could expect a drop in your HbA1c, which is your three month average of your glucose control, by anywhere between one and 2% in old money, which equates to 11 to 22 millimoles per mole in the new readings. So they can actually be quite effective compared to other type two diabetes medications. Negatives of sulfonylureas. As sulfonylureas make your pancreas release more insulin, low blood glucose levels are a risk. Therefore, you'll need to test your glucose levels anywhere between one to two times per day, which for some people can be a big deal as it involves a finger prick test. The other downside is that insulin is an anabolic hormone. It means it builds you up. And if you're producing more of it, it can lead to weight gain. So we can expect an average weight gain of around two kilograms in patients taking sulfonylureas, but some people will be less, some people will be much more. Obviously, this is a problem in type 2 diabetes where the vast majority of patients have the condition, or at least one of the major contributing reasons to having the condition, is that they're carrying too much fat mass in the first place. Therefore, if we give them medications that encourage more weight gain, it just really exacerbates the problem longer term. When not to use sulfonylureas. One of the key contraindications with sulfonylureas is for people that have variable appetites. This is because they make you produce more insulin, and therefore if you don't eat when taking them, you're producing more insulin without extra carbohydrate or glucose entering your system, which can leave you susceptible to low glucose levels. This is a particular problem in vulnerable populations such as the elderly, who might have a hyperglycemic episode and perhaps have a fall, or something worse which can cause damage. Chronic kidney disease may also be a contraindication to taking sulfonylureas. Insulin is cleared by the kidney, so when we have kidney damage, the excess insulin that's produced from the pancreas might hang around for longer, which can again leave you susceptible to low glucose levels. Sulfonylureas are also contraindicated in type 1 diabetes and type 3 diabetes where insulin production might be hindered. This is because these patients produce little or no insulin of their own. So essentially asking the pancreas to produce more insulin when it has no insulin producing capabilities isn't going to work. Finally, some diabetes teams may recommend stopping your sulfonylurea if you commence insulin therapy. The reason for this is quite simple. If you start insulin therapy, it shows us that your body is struggling either to produce enough insulin or the insulin that you're producing isn't working very well. So we're having to supplement that with a subcutaneous injection. So by continuing sulfonylureas alongside the additional insulin that's being injected, then essentially we're asking the pancreas to produce even more insulin, even though it's not working very well, and we're adding in extra insulin anyway. 
So what we can start to do is tire out the pancreas and overwork it. Over time, this can start to further wear out the pancreas, and over time, it can actually lead to progression of your type 2 diabetes. Therefore, the thinking is that by stopping the sulfonylurea alongside insulin therapy, we're actually preserving some of the pancreatic function. And that's it guys for sulfonylureas. I hope you found this useful. If you haven't done so already or you're not watching on the blog, head over to diabetesdietguide.com. We have a bunch of free information all about managing diabetes, whether it's type 2, type 1, or any other type of diabetes, it's all there for you. And what we're giving you is practical, real life strategies that we use in clinical practice to help you manage your health. If you're actually just looking for more healthy living advice, we have that too. So make sure you head over there and check out the most relevant categories for you. If you need a further helping hand, we also offer one-to-one -one consultancy where we offer a patient-centered approach and really get under the hood to help manage your long-term condition or particularly your diabetes. We also offer courses that is one step down from our one-to-one -one personalized service, but it shows you everything you need to know about your condition at the time of filming we have our type 2 diabetes recovery plan but we're also producing a type 1 diabetes plan and a winning weight loss solutions plan so keep an eye out for those they are coming with those you also get full dietary plan and guidance so essentially we're making you the experts so you don't need us anymore so i'll leave it there we look forward to seeing you in the next video and thanks for watching